What is the best type of exercise for seniors? Is it strength training or is it endurance training? Or is it a combination of both? In this video today, we will answer the age old question of strength or endurance, specifically as it relates to seniors. Now, any exercise is better than no exercise at all. You can jog or do jujitsu, play pickleball or Pilates, do chair exercises or calisthenics. A 2012 Harvard study found that just 15 minutes of daily activity can reduce all-cause mortality risk by 22% and extend life expectancy up to three years. But there are some forms of exercise that are better than others, specifically for seniors. To figure out the most effective form of training for seniors, we need to understand the goals that training is trying to accomplish. For most seniors that we work with, they want to see improvements in five key areas. Number one, strength. Number two, endurance. Number three, mobility. Number four, balance. And number five, body composition. Let's go through each of those five key areas and see which type of training, strength or cardio, is going to help us the most. Hi, I'm Dr. Matt Klingler, physical therapist and the owner of Village Fitness and Physical Therapy. We're on a mission to help seniors build strength and take back their health. First, let's talk about strength. Muscle helps us to survive old age. There was a Chilean study that looked at 1,400 individuals with an average age of 70 at enrollment. They split subjects up into quartiles depending on the amount of lean muscle mass that the subjects had. After 12 years, what they found was that those in the lowest quartile had a 50% chance of dying, whereas those in the highest quartile only had a 20% chance. More muscle literally cut chances of death by more than half. There's also the Hallmark Grip Strength Study. For every 11 pound increase in grip strength, you're 16% less likely to die from all causes. So strength is really important for improving longevity. But what a lot of people don't talk about is the different types of muscle within the body and how important it is to understand those for longevity. You see, we have two main types of muscle, type one and type two. Type 1 muscle fibers are responsible for endurance activities like walking, standing, hiking, cycling, postural support. Type 2 is responsible for faster movements like getting up from the ground, standing up from a chair, lifting something overhead, sprinting, running, etc. Now, we need both types of muscle as we age, but research shows we lose type 2 muscle fibers at two to three times the rate of type 1. The average person who's 80 years old will have 40% less muscle than their 30 year old self. But most of that decrease in muscle comes from losing type two muscle fiber volume. This is very concerning because type two muscles are responsible for the activities that help us to maintain our independence and mobility. So what do we do to reverse the loss of type two muscle fiber? The answer is strength training. The research shows time and again that strength training is the best and the only way to ward off the loss of type two muscle fiber. Now, many pundits of health will tell you that you need to do walking or other types of cardio training to stay healthy as you age and maintain your muscle. But what they don't understand is that that type of training is not sufficient to maintain type two muscle fiber. We need a training program targeted specifically towards type two muscle to maintain type two muscle. And the answer is strength training. Now, thankfully, the research shows that most of the muscle we lose is not a loss of muscle fibers, but a decrease in muscle fiber size. So the muscle fibers are still there, even if we've gotten very weak and we can still improve their strength. A research study was done on subjects with an average age of 84 at enrollment, and they took them through a 12 week lower body strength training program. They found that muscle mass increased by 40%, the actual volume of muscle increased by 40% in the 12 weeks, and muscle strength increased by over 50%. Another study looked at nonagenarians, people in their 90s, and found that even folks in the ninth decade of life were able to increase strength with a consistent strength training program. So no matter your age, no matter your history, you can increase strength in your body at any age. So now we know and understand a little bit about why strength is important for aging and longevity. Let's talk about endurance. Endurance is also critically linked to longevity. The best measure we have for measuring endurance is VO2 max. 
This measures how well our body utilizes oxygen during exercise. It's a great indicator of the health of our lungs, our heart, our circulatory system, and our muscles. One study uh, linking VO2 max to longevity is the Cooper Longitudinal Study that was published in 2018 in JAMA. And what they found was after following 120,000 individuals was that VO2 max was critically linked to longevity in the following ways. Higher levels of cardiorespiratory fitness or higher VO2 maxes were linked to lower levels of mortality. The study found that those in the highest quartile of VO2 max were 80% less likely to die than those in the lowest quartile. And even moderate increases in VO2 max led to pretty significant increases in life expectancy. The study provides strong evidence that even small increases in our aerobic fitness or our endurance can play a very pivotal role in improving our chances of living longer and healthier. When we endurance train, there's four key adaptations that take place in the body. Number one is a bigger, stronger heart. Number two is more blood in our circulatory system so that we get more oxygen to our tissues. Number three is less stress. Less of the actual stress hormones get released in the body in response to any stressors or any exercise. So we become more resilient to stress. And then number four, we get budding of vessels, meaning we have more vessels in our muscles, meaning as blood gets circulated around to our body, it can perfuse our tissues and infuse them with oxygen. By now it should be clear that we need both strength and endurance to be healthy as we age. So why not just do an abundance of both types of training? Well, the answer is interference. I'm not talking about the type of interference you'll see on Sundays in a football game. We're talking about the interference of cardio training with strength training and vice versa. Robert Hickson, a PhD in exercise physiology and avid power lifter, began working in John Halosi's lab back in the 1980s. Halosi is considered the father of endurance training research and in order to spend time with Halosi, uh, Robert Hickson, the power lifter, would go on runs with him. And what he noticed as he'd start to go on runs with his professor he was training under was that he was losing muscle but gaining endurance. When he brought this up to Halosi, Halosi suggested that he do research on the very subject of the interaction between strength training and endurance training. Well, that was exactly what Robert Hickson decided to do. And he conducted the seminal study on concurrent training or the effect on strength and endurance. He split subjects into three different groups, a strength training group, an endurance training group, and a concurrent training group where they did both strength and endurance. Not surprisingly, the endurance training group didn't gain very much strength at all, but saw quite a bit of increase to their endurance. Not surprisingly, the strength training group gained a lot of strength and saw minimal changes to their endurance. But the concurrent training group is where it really gets interesting. What they found was that doing both strength and endurance training led to similar improvements to endurance as the endurance training group, but nowhere near the improvements in strength. In fact, in the first six or seven weeks of the study, you saw steady increases in muscle strength in the concurrent training group, and then they hit a plateau somewhere around week six or seven. It was as if the endurance training began to interfere with the gains in strength. The real issue seems to be that when we do both strength and endurance training, our muscles don't grow or hypertrophy like they would with just strength training alone. There appears to be a metabolic switch or a toggle that our body turns between endurance and strength and the switch can only go in one direction. Here's some good news. There are ways that you can mitigate the interference effect between endurance and strength training. One is just to do your endurance training on different days than your strength training. This allows time for the body to flip the switch back to strength and back to endurance so that you can make improvements in both. If you have to do your endurance and strength on the same day, do the endurance training at least three hours before the strength training. Research also shows that intensity matters. 
if your endurance training is done at lower levels of intensity, which it turns out are sufficient to yield the longevity benefits and the VO2 max benefits of endurance training, you will significantly lessen the interference effect of endurance training on strength training. So examples of low intensity endurance exercise would be something like walking, swimming, uh, or any other type of endurance exercise where you can talk and hold a conversation while you're doing the exercise. It's called the talk test, and it's a great practical way to determine how intense your endurance exercise is. When most people think of mobility, they envision themselves being twisted up like a pretzel in a yoga class or endless amounts of stretching before and after a workout. But what if I told you that stretching was not necessary to make improvements in flexibility? The time effective and I would say optimal way to improve flexibility is through full range of motion strength training. Full range of motion strength training is just as it sounds. It means squatting to full depth, pressing through a full range of motion overhead, or deadlifting through an entire range of motion. A study done by Thrash and Kelly looked at traditional strength training exercises like squats, deadlifts, lunges, and overhead presses, and had subjects follow a training program for 11 weeks. What they found was that they increased joint range of motion at the shoulder, ankle, and hip throughout the study duration without doing any traditional stretching. What's more, subjects also increase strength by following the program. The bottom line is that stretching training can be of some value and you can do it if you want to, but you can rest assured that you're gonna get flexibility and mobility benefits from a full range of motion strength training program. Balance is one of the primary concerns for seniors. And with good reason, falls are the leading cause of accidental death in Americans over the age of 65. And this doesn't even count the folks who die in the months or years following a fall due to fall-related complications. Research consistently shows that having more muscle decreases our chances of falling. And if we do fall, we'll have the bone density and the muscle strength to withstand the fall and not break a bone. When it comes to improving balance for seniors, it appears that both strength exercises like squats and deadlifts and traditional balance exercises like standing on one leg, both have improvements on balance. And the biggest improvements on balance come from doing a program that incorporates both types of training. My typical recommendation for folks is to incorporate some single leg strength training exercises into their routine to make sure that they're checking the box for balance training. We'll go over a few of these when we get to the training section at the end of the video. Lastly, let's talk about body composition, which is the balance of fat and muscle within our bodies. For decades, health experts have been telling us to eat less and move more. We have a great example of this from pop culture in the show, The Biggest Loser. Contestants would exercise cardiovascularly for hours every single day and eat next to nothing. And it worked. The average contestant would lose over 100 pounds through 30 weeks of the show. But what they don't tell you is that nearly every contestant on the show gained the weight back and then some. Sadly, the contestants' metabolisms decreased significantly more than you would expect for someone who had lost the amount of weight that they'd lost. It was almost as if their bodies were trying to get back to their previous weight and sabotage them. This isn't just a one-off. The Women's Health Dietary Initiative trial was one of the largest studies done on diet and exercise. The study followed thousands of women and split them into a control group and an exercise and eat less group. The exercise and eat less group was instructed to exercise, to eat a diet of reduced calories, to up their carbohydrates and decrease their fat. The typical exercise and nutrition recommendations for Americans today. What they found was that initially, the exercise and eat less group lost weight. But over the course of time, even while continuing to eat less and exercise more, the groups normalized. By nine years into the study, there was no statistical difference between the two groups. We need a strategy that allows us to burn body fat while keeping our metabolism running high. And that strategy is strength training. 
Strength training has been consistently shown in the research to maintain lean muscle mass even as we lose body fat and rev up our metabolism or get it working more. Muscle is very metabolically costly tissue, so having more of it means you'll burn more calories at rest even if you don't do anything else. In a study by Truith et al., researchers found that a consistent strength training program yielded decreases in body fat and increases in muscle with as little as eight weeks. Lastly, let's get into an ideal training program that combines strength training and endurance training and everything you need as a senior to have maximal health. An ideal training program for seniors would include three days a week of strength training. On Mondays, I'd recommend doing squats, three sets of five, deadlift, one set of five, and overhead press, three sets of seven. On Tuesdays, I would recommend doing some low-level cardiovascular exercise like walking or hiking for 45 to 60 minutes. Uh, remember the talk test we talked about earlier. Make sure that you can hold a conversation as you're doing this form of exercise to ensure that your endurance training is not high enough to cause an interference effect with your strength training. On Wednesday, you're gonna be strength training again. Again, doing squats, three sets of five. We're also gonna be doing push-ups and pull-ups on this day, three sets of eight for both of those. And then we're gonna get into some strength-focused balance training by doing a single leg deadlift for three sets of 10 on each side. Thursday, you're back to the walking or hiking program, the same as Tuesday. On Fridays, you'll do your final strength training workout of the week, which will include squats, three sets of five, a bench press or a chest press for three sets of five, a deadlift again for one set of five, and a balance focused strength exercise, the Peterson step for three sets of 10 on each side. Your final cardio day will be Saturday, on this day, I'd recommend doing a longer cardio training session of one to two hours. Again, making sure that you can follow the prescribed recommendation of being able to do the talk test as you do the entire workout. Sunday is an off day or going for a gentle walk, and then you repeat again and again. This sort of training program prioritizes what's most important for seniors, strength while well, still giving time for the endurance training necessary to improve your VO2 max. This will help you to stay healthy and optimize your longevity as you age. Thanks for watching. Click like and subscribe if you're a senior trying to maximize your health and you want more content just like this.